The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 has now finally made its way into all the best flagship Android smartphones, namely the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, Xiaomi 14 Ultra, Oppo Find X7 Ultra, OnePlus 12 and Honor Magic 6 Pro. But which will come out on top when running through four different benchmark tests where we'll be testing out battery drain, heat dissipation, throttling score and frames per second. All phones have been set to the exact same brightness levels using a lux meter. All of them have been updated to their latest available software updates. They are of course all rocking the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chipset, but the S24 Ultra is rocking a slightly overclocked version. They all make use of LPDDR5X RAM and UFS 4.0 storage. All of them have LTPO displays which can refresh between 1 and 120 hertz. They have all been set to their highest possible screen resolutions and all of them will be using their respective high performance modes. Today we'll be running through the latest versions of Antutu version 10, Geekbench 6, 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme and 3D Mark Solar Bay, and in between each benchmark, we'll be noting down each phone's temperature changes. Which device will come out on top in terms of efficiency and cooling? And will the overclocked Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, as seen inside the S24 Ultra, actually make a difference? This is Tech Nick, and without further ado, let's find out. Before we get things going, we're gonna be checking out the percentages at the start of the test, which we'll compare at the end of the test to get those milliamp hour per minute readings. We'll be using an infrared heat gun with an emissivity level of around 0.5 and a room temperature of around 19.6 degrees in Celsius. The AC was on throughout the test at around 16 degrees in Celsius and all phones have been sitting idle for a while now. The warmest device here is the Xiaomi 14 Ultra and the coolest is the S24 Ultra while sitting idle. The first benchmark that we will be hopping into today is Antutu version 10 and just to let you guys know you can't really compare results from version 10 to version 9. They have changed it a little bit and scores are a little bit higher because there is a bit more stress that goes into this test with the changes that have been made. The CPU portion has been changed to optimize support for multi-core parallel processing. GPU is based on Unreal Engine 4 now and it has two new 3D test scenes. One is a high stress test called Seasons which is this one now and the one after this is called Coastline 2.0 for ordinary GPUs. We also have an update in terms of storage and memory in terms of ROM and RAM which has now seen the RAM being divided into bandwidth and latency to clearly demonstrate LPDDR5 performance well LPDDR5X since all of these are using those modules. They have also changed up user experience. They've added PDF document processing capabilities. They've added processing capabilities of large pixel images above 2K. They've added decoding of H.265 and encoding of H.264 video files to more comprehensively evaluate the device's video processing ability and of course they have also added in editing since yes you can now edit on smartphones in 2024 it's a bit too cumbersome for my hands and I prefer editing on a PC but if you are out there and you only have a smartphone it's probably worth picking one of these up if you want to edit on the fly now all of these are of course Android devices so we can compare all of these scores and while the S24 Ultra is the only one here with an overclocked version of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chipset, it's not as significant as we saw last year with the 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy which was significantly better than the vanilla 8 Gen 2. This time we just have a boost in the main single core, the boosted main core that being at 3.4 gigahertz as opposed to the standard 3.3 gigahertz that we see on the other four devices here. But what is a big change this year is that the Adreno 750 which all of them have by the way and they all have hardware accelerated ray tracing chips inside of them as well but the Galaxy S24 Ultra can hit up to 1 gigahertz speeds in terms of GPU rendering as opposed to the regular 770 megahertz that we see on the other four devices over here. Now taking a look at temperatures after Antutu the S24 Ultra was the coolest and added the least in terms of temperature gain while the Xiaomi 14 Ultra was the hottest and added the most. The next benchmark that we'll be jumping into is Geekbench version 6 and it has changed changed up a bit from Geekbench version 5. Version 5 focused on multi-cores tested by multiple individual tasks, while Geekbench version 6 uses multi-cores tested by one workload and uses all the cores together on that shared objective. So scores are once again slightly different and a little bit higher and for some reason the Oppo took a lot longer over here. I think it's because of throttling. We'll see a little bit later when we test our temperatures and here we go. The Oppo dropped by 6.6 .6 degrees in Celsius, whereas the S24 Ultra dropped 
topped by only 0.8 degrees in Celsius and is still the coolest with the Xiaomi being the hottest. And the next benchmark that we'll be jumping into is 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme. It's pretty similar to 3D Mark Wildlife, but it renders at 4K. We'll be testing it across all devices over here. It's just a quick one minute bench test, but getting back to throttling. Now, if it does drop, by a certain amount of degrees Celsius, it doesn't necessarily mean it's throttling, like the S24 Ultra dropped by just 0.8 degrees in Celsius and the rest, we're pretty much in line with that. They're not really throttling, it's just less of a load in that benchmark test as opposed to Antutu, Geekbench is not as heavy hitting as Antutu was. And 3D Mark Wildlife is a little bit more, so we shouldn't be seeing much more of a drop over here in general. Now, if it does drop by a lot, like we saw with the Oppo, then it does generally mean it's throttling, which will mean that the CPU and GPU are affecting each other and the scores get dropped because it's trying to bring the temperature down in order to prevent overheating. Now, temperature gain is not something that you necessarily want to see, but it actually means that the CPU and GPU are working in harmony because you can't have good scores without it heating up by a bit, but there does Need to be a little bit of a balance. Now after 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme over here, we still have the S24 Ultra as the coolest, but this time the OnePlus 12 is the hottest. The Oppo jumped back up by another 6.6 .6 degrees in Celsius, and the Xiaomi 14 Ultra didn't actually add anything in terms of temperature. Now the last benchmark that we'll be jumping into today is 3D Mark Solar Bay. It's a new ray tracing bench found inside of 3D Mark, which has three different sections, with ray tracing workloads increasing in each section. Now it will be interesting at the end of this because we're going to be checking out temperature as well as battery and it is worth noting that the Honor Magic 6 Pro is the only one here with a silicon carbon battery actually a second generation silicon carbon battery over here and it is the largest at 5600 milliamp hours followed by the OnePlus at 5400 milliamp hours and the three on the left side are all sitting at 5000 milliamp hours so it'll be interesting to see how efficient they are especially in terms of weighing it up between temperature efficiency and scores now of course as I mentioned earlier all of them do have hardware accelerated ray tracing built within them but the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra has an overclocked Adreno 750 so it should on paper at least manage to score higher in 3D Mark than the other four devices over here as well as the GPU section of Antutu but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Now checking out temperature results at the end of 3D Mark Solar Bay we still have the S24 Ultra as the lowest and the OnePlus 12 as the highest. The Oppo Find X7 Ultra added the most once again and the Xiaomi 14 Ultra added the least. Now in terms of overall temperature from start to finish, the S24 Ultra ended off the coolest and added the least temperature gain, while the OnePlus 12 ended the hottest and had the most temperature gain. Now in terms of battery performance, the S24 Ultra dropped by the lowest percentage and had the best milliamp hour per minute drain reading, while the OnePlus 12 had the highest drain reading and the highest percentage drain. This is pretty strange since in my recent battery drain test, the OnePlus 12 actually outdid the Oppo in terms of battery, but I guess the OnePlus doesn't really work well under too much load. And after all, the high performance mode that it uses is extremely taxing. When it comes to Antutu scores, I guess it's safe to say that the overclocked Snapdragon H Gen 3 found inside the S24 Ultra does indeed help with CPU since it scored the highest score in terms of CPU performance within Antutu version 10. However, the Xiaomi 14 Ultra wasn't really far behind it in terms of CPU score, and it placed first overall with almost 2.1 million score. Now in second place, we had the Honor Magic 6 Pro, which actually had the best GPU performance. In third, we had the Oppo Find X7 Ultra with the best user experience. In fourth, we had the OnePlus 12. And in fifth, we had the S24 Ultra, even though it had the highest score in terms of CPU. Moving on to Geekbench version six single core scores, it's safe to say that when I mentioned throttling earlier, it was indeed the case with the Oppo when it dropped by 6.6 .6 degrees in Celsius, and it did indeed throttle and got a measly score of 971 as opposed to over 2000 on the rest of the devices running the same chipsets. That means the S24 Ultra placed first here, very impressively indeed. Second, we had the OnePlus 12. In third, not far behind the OnePlus 12, is the Honor Magic 6 Pro. And in fourth, we have the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, also pretty much in line with that. The Oppo once again placed fifth in terms of multi-core score in Geekbench version six, with the same terrible score due to throttling. In fourth place, we had the OnePlus 12. Third, the Honor Magic 6 Pro. Second, the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. And again, the S24 Ultra making its way up to first place here. When it comes to 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, you would think that the overclocked Adreno 750 GPU found inside the S24 Ultra would actually perform the best, but it's actually the complete opposite as it placed fifth here. 
First place, we had the Honor Magic 6 Pro, seriously impressing me and really leapfrogging the rest of the phones here. Second place, the OnePlus 12, quite impressive. Third place, the Oppo Find X7 Ultra and fourth, the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. And when testing out Solar Bay to test out ray tracing, first place, once again, we have the Honor Magic 6 Pro and all of these placements are exactly the same as we saw in 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, with fifth being the S24 Ultra, fourth being the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, third being the Oppo Find X7 Ultra, second being the OnePlus 12, and of course, first being the Honor Magic 6 Pro. But the interesting thing to note here is that the OnePlus 12 actually had the highest minimum FPS and the highest maximum FPS as well, but I guess it just wasn't as stable as the Honor. So wrapping things up and looking at them overall, the Samsung had the best temperatures and battery efficiency, while the OnePlus had the worst temperatures and worst battery efficiency. All of them did pretty well across all benchmark scores, but overall the Honor impressed me the most with the most first place results, then the OnePlus with the most second place results, then the Oppo with the most third, Xiaomi with the most fourth, and dead last the S24 Ultra, but it did surprise me in Geekbench. Let me know your thoughts on these scores in the comment section down below, as well as which phone you would pick up if you can afford them, and bear in mind the OnePlus is actually the cheapest device here. This is Technic and I'll catch you in the next one.